Welcome back to the ongoing series translating and analysing the complete play of The Merchant of Venice. We are up to Act 2, Scene 2, the humorous uh, interchange between Launcelot and his father Gobbo. And uh, Gobbo has just felt Launcelot's face and said, you know, you've got more of a beard than uh, my horse Dobbin has got hair on his tail. And we carry on from there where Launcelot says, It should seem then that Dobbin's tail grows backwards. I'm sure he had more hair on his tail than I have on my face when I last saw him. So he's saying, well, it would appear then that Dobbin's tail is growing backwards because I'm sure he had more hair on his tail than I have on my face when I last saw him. Gobbo says, Lord, how art thou changed? How dost thou and thy master agree? I have brought him a present. How agree you now? So, Lord, you've changed so much. How do you and Shylock get on? Of course, as the audience, we've seen that Launcelot doesn't get on with Shylock at all. Uh, I've brought him a present. How are you? And Launcelot says, well, well, but for mine own part, as I have set up my rest to run away, so I will not rest till I have run some ground. My master's a very Jew. Give him a present, give him a halter. I am famished in his service. You may tell every finger I have with my ribs. Father, I am glad you are come. Give me your present to one master, Bassanio, who indeed gives rare new liveries if I serve him not. I will run as far as God have any ground. O oh, rare fortune, here comes the man to me, uh, to him, Father, for I am a Jew if I serve the Jew any longer. Now, this is the kind of interweaving of the plots, because this isn't just a story about Bassanio and Portia. It's not just a story about Antonio and Shylock. There are other plots as well. That's one of the generic conventions of a comedy, is that there are all these interweaving plots. Uh, and what is Launcelot saying here? He's saying, I'm well, but I've made up my mind to run away, so I will not rest until I've put some distance between us. My master is a Jew. Give him a present, give him a noose. I'm starving working for him. Uh, you can count all my ribs, and I'm glad you've come, Father, because you can give me your present to give to Master Bassanio, who gives his servants beautiful new uniforms. If I can't work for him, I'll run away to the ends of the earth. Oh, what good fortune, here comes the Bassanio. Now, let's go and talk to him, Father, because if I work for the Jew any longer, I'll become a Jew myself. Now, a little clue about how Bassanio is spending the money which uh, he's recently acquired, of course, from Shylock through Antonio. And it is, it could be argued, wasteful. You know, he's getting nice uniforms for his servants. And it's also deceitful because these servants are uh, short term. You know, he, he's basically making himself look like something he's not. Here comes Bassanio with Leonardo and other followers. Uh, you may do so, but let it be so hasted that supper be ready at the furthest by five o'clock. See these letters delivered, put the liveries to making, and desire Graciano to come anon to my lodging. Off goes the servant. So Bassanio is saying, that's fine, go ahead, but be so quick that supper is ready by five at the latest. Uh, make sure these letters are delivered, get the uniforms made, and ask Graciano to come and visit me soon. Launcelot says to him, father, you know, go talk to him, dad. Gobbo says to Bassanio, uh, God bless your worship. God bless you. Bassanio says, uh, Gramercy, wouldst thou aught with me? Uh, many thanks. Do you want something? And Gobbo says, here's my son, sir, a poor boy. So, you know, this is my son. Uh, he's a poor boy. Launcelot says, not a poor boy, sir, but the rich Jews man. That would, sir, as my father shall specify. So Launcelot straight away says, look, Dad, go and speak to Bassanio for me. He goes to speak to him, but then he doesn't like how he's describing him. He's like, don't describe me as a poor boy. Uh, I'm the rich Jew servant who would like, sir, as my father will explain. And then Gobbo jumps in. He hath a great infection, sir, as one would say, to serve. Now, this is an example of malapropisms. I go into this in great detail in the ebook. You know, the, the, the misuse of words. He doesn't really mean to use the word uh, infection. Um, and, you know, when he does use it, it's for comic effect. So I'll tell you what he's trying to say. He would very much like, sir, as one might say, to work for. 
Uh, Launcelot jumps in again. Indeed, the short and the long is, I serve the Jew and have a desire as my father shall specify. So to cut a long story short, I work for the Jew and very much like, as my father would explain. And then Gobbo jumps in. His master and he, saving your worship's reverence, are scarce cater cousins. So his master and he, with all due respect, could not be described as close friends. And Lord Slot says, To be brief, the very truth is that the Jew, having done me wrong, doth cause me as my father, being I, hope, an old man, shall fruitify unto you. So he says, in brief, the absolute truth is that the Jew has wronged me, forced me, as my father will confirm to you. And then Gobbo says, I have here a dish of doves that I would bestow upon your worship, and my suit is. So now he's talking about the gift. I have a gift which I would like to honour you with, and my request is... And you can see the comedy in this, that they keep interrupting each other and, and not going anywhere. Uh, Launcelot says, in very brief, the suit is impertinent to myself, as your worship shall know by this honest old man. And though I say it, though old man, yet poor, my father. So he's saying, look, this request is about me. Um, you'll find out from this honest old man, my father. Bassanio says, one speak for both. What would you? In other words, you know, just one of you should speak. What is it you want? Launcelot says, serve you, sir. I want to work for you. Gobbo says, that is the very defect of the matter. Uh, you know, should have said, that is the very effect of the matter. Again, humorous malapropism. Uh, that is the fact of the matter, sir. Bassanio says, I know thee well, thou hast obtained thy suit. Shylock, thy master, spoke with me this day, and hath preferred thee, if it be preferment, to leave a rich Jew's service to become the follower of so poor a gentleman. So he's saying, look, I know who you are, your request has been granted. Uh, Shylock spoke to me and recommended you, if it can be recommended, to quit working for a rich Jew, to become the employee of such a poor gentleman. So, you know, yeah, you can come and work for me, uh, but I don't have a lot of money. Launcelot says, the old proverb is very well parted between my master Shylock and you, sir. You have the grace of God, sir, and he hath enough. And he's really saying the old proverb that the grace of God is enough because it could easily be shared between uh, Shylock and, and you. But Sanio says, thou speakest it well. Go, father, with thy son, take leave of thy old master and inquire my lodging out. Give him a livery more guarded than his fellows. See it done. So he basically says, you know, well said, father, go with your son, leave your old master, uh, find out how to get to my home. And he says to a servant, you know, give him a uniform uh, more smart than his fellow servants. So sort of promote him to, you know, a good position, um, make smart uh, than his fellow servants. Uh, sorry, more smart than his fellow servants. Make sure it is done. And Launcelot says, uh, Father, in I cannot get a service, no, I have never a tongue in my head. Well, if any man in Italy have a fairer table which doth offer to swear upon a book, I shall have good fortune. Go to, he is a simple line of life, he is a small trifle of wives. Alas, fifteen wives is nothing, eleven widows and nine maids, and it's a simple coming in for one man. And then to scape drowning thrice, and to be in peril of my life with the edge of a feather bed, here are simple scapes. Well, if fortune be a woman, she's a good wench for this gear. Father, come, I'll take my leave of the Jew in the twinkling of an eye. So what's he saying? Come on, Dad, let's go. I can't get a job. No, I've never been able to speak. Well, I doubt that any man in Italy has a better palm with which to swear upon a Bible. I have good luck. Here's my lifeline. Here's the small matter of wives. Alas, fifteen widows is nothing. Eleven widows and nine maids is a small start for a man. I'll escape drowning three times and be in great danger when caught in bed with another man's wife. But here you can see the lines which are escape routes. Well, if luck is a lady, she's a good woman for this business. Father, come on, I'll leave that Jew in the twinkling of an eye. And off he goes. And then Bassanio uh, talks, as Launcelot and Gobbo go, to Leonardo. And he says... And you didn't know this uh, play was linked to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I'm sure. But he says, I pray thee, good Leonardo, think on this. These things being bought and orderly bestowed, return in haste. For I do feast tonight, my best esteemed acquaintance. Hi thee, go. So he's saying to Leonardo here, um, you know, uh, make this a priority. After you've bought these items and presented them to the recipient, come back quickly because I'm having dinner this evening with someone I greatly respect. Off you go. 
And Leonardo says, my best endeavours shall be done herein. So I'll do my best. And then in comes Graciano. And we'll continue that in the next video. Please do subscribe to the channel.